Hey everyone, and welcome to this Marvel Snap Top 10, where we're going to talk about the top 10 best Pool 1 cards in Marvel Snap. And this isn't like a Pool 1 tier list, where we talk about just Pool 1 cards in Pool 1. We're talking about if you have every card in the game, and you're building a deck, what are the Pool 1 cards that you look at and you're like, hell yeah, I want that in my deck. That's what we're talking about today. The pool one cards that stand the test of time. The ones that we turn to when we can pick any card and we pick these ones. And today we're starting with number 10. And number 10 is none other than one of the most mobile cards in the game. And that is Nightcrawler. I believe that Nightcrawler at number 10 is the perfect place to put him. He's not overpowered. He's a one, two, that's not crazy. But what he does do for you is he gives you incredible mobility. He gives you the opportunity to reach into locations that you might not be able to reach into. He gives you the opportunity to generate space and locations that you might need to make additional plays into. He allows you to combo with Angela, who you damn well know is on this list as well. He gives you so much added flexibility. How can you not be excited about Nightcrawler? He's our number 10. Coming in at rank number 9 is a card that I believe you've all played and you know is super valuable in so many different situations. And that card, my friends, is Scarlet Witch. How can you not play Scarlet Witch if you're in Pool 1 and 2? How can you not play Scarlet Witch when you're in Pool 3? Scarlet Witch is one of those cards that really has a tremendous impact on the game. Until you unlock Storm, Scarlet Witch represents one of the only lane correction, uh, lane correction utilities that you have. Scarlet Witch not only has more power than Storm as a 2-3, but also provides you with the opportunity to really screw over your opponents with a really fantastic switcheroo. However, it's also worth noting that you might screw yourself. That's what RNG does. And that is the kind of downside to Scarlet Witch, that the random location might actually completely ruin your game. But with that being said, generally speaking, in terms of RNG, if you have a terrible location that works against you, I mean, a completely random one, generally speaking, has got to be better than that garbage one. But regardless, as a 2-3, it is an extremely high tempo play on 2. For 2 energy, you completely change the location. Sometimes, if there's a featured location, you play around 2, wipe it out, and the opponent just cries. Or you play it, and you know there's the Nexus, which kind of spreads power across the entire board, and they're committing to it fully, thinking that they're going to win the game, and then you just change it. Or maybe they limbo with magic, and they think there's a turn 7, and you just change it on 2 mana, and all of a sudden the game ends on 6, and they have a whole hand, and they're like, that feels terrible. Scarlet Witch is a damn good card, and that's why Scarlet Witch earned number 9 on this list. Coming in at number 8 is a card that some people thought was absolute trash, and so did Ben Brode. So what Ben Brode did was simple. He buffed it. He reduced it by cost by 1. He brought it from a 6 cost to a 5 cost, and of course, my friends, we're talking about Blue Marvel. Blue Marvel comes in at number 8, and that is because at... At 5 cost, you have so many additional combos now. You have the Onslaught combo, you have the Kazar at 4, the Blue Marvel at 5, the, the Onslaught on 6. You have a zoo nightmare for your opponents. And Blue Marvel at 5 was perfect. It really was. Because at 6, it didn't feel like you had enough impact. Because as you might think, and as you might know, the 6 cost cards have this immense impact on the board. Like, they are game-winning combination cards, and, Mar and Blue Marvel just never had that feeling. Playing Blue Marvel on 6 felt kind of bad. Playing him on 5 with an Onslaught for turn 6 feels absolutely friggin' fantastic. And that is why Blue Marvel is earning number 8. Coming in at number 7 is a card that also got buffed recently before launch. It was a card that cost a little more, it did a little less, and it was one of those cards that people were like, you know what, this card has so much potential, but it's just not quite there yet. My friends, coming in at number 7 is Jessica Jones. Jessica Jones is a card that just provides you with an incredible amount of value. A 4 cost 4 that jumps into an 8. 8 being key because it's not 9 and therefore Shang-Chi can't punch it out. So you have a 4 cost 8 on the board. And the only thing you can have to do is not play into that location again. I mean, that's not too hard, is it? Can it really be that difficult to just not play into Jessica Jones' location? In fact, it's really not hard. Anybody that's played a lot of Jessica Jones will recognize that the condition for her on reveal is really pretty easy to play around, especially since it's a 4-drop. If it was a 5-drop, playing not in that lane is like, well, do they finish that lane for the win? As a 4-drop, you have the opportunity to play there on 6, which is extremely important. And it's also worth noting that Jessica Jones does not get impacted by, you know, effects like, uh, you know, Doom Bots from Doctor Doom or White Tiger's Tigers. Doesn't care, as long as you don't play the card into her lane. 
And so for a 4.8, that's a tremendous amount of value. You don't really see that kind of value until you get into the rescues of uh, pool three. So for a pool one card to be able to trade value with someone like rescue, that's a damn good card. In fact, it's the seventh best card in pool one. For spot number six on this list, we got to go to one of the big boys. And sometimes you just need a card that has an immense impact on the game state on turn six. You need a card that says, you know what, friends? I see you in that location there, and I know you're itching for more action. I know you want to honor reveal again, and your boy Odin is going to allow you to do that. As Odin comes down and everyone repocks their on reveals, the victory is surely in your hands. And that is one of the reasons why Odin finds himself in decks all the way from pool one all the way to pool three and above, because Odin is just damn good. There is a ton of value in reprocking on reveal abilities. It's a beautiful sight to behold, a beautiful sight to behold. And it creates a design space as a deck builder where you know you can set up a location with on reveals that have a huge impact and play a card like Odin to win a game. It's a beautiful deck building card. It's a high impact card as a six eight. What else do you want? You want it to be six nine? Nice. But I mean, He's strong enough as a 6'8", and he has an immense impact on the board. That is why Odin earns number six slot on this list. For position number five, friends, we're getting prehistoric. That's right, I gave away the answer. We're going to Devil Dinosaur. Devil Dinosaur is an absolutely remarkable card because much like fine wine, Devil Dinosaur gets better with age because as you progress from pool one to pool two, Devil Dinosaur becomes incredibly better. And then as you progress into pool three, you get access to even more wild combos with your boy Devil Dinosaur. And you really can't sleep on Devil Dinosaur. There are few cards that can have as much impact on a board state as Devil Dinosaur. I mean, it can be the opposite when they play Enchantress, but that's another conference. Let's pretend like Enchantress is exist for a second, okay? We're talking about Devil Dinosaur. Relax, everybody. Super good card. Incredibly combo specific. Incredibly high tempo. And you know what? The nice thing about playing Devil Dinosaur decks is when you're drawing additional cards and adding cards to your hand, you get this added flexibility for turns one through four where you're like, huh, this card I got for free is pretty awesome. I'm going to play it. It works perfectly. That card that Agent 13 pulled is perfect. That cable card is perfect. It happens more than you would think. Devil Dinosaur loves that. Loves it. And there are so many combos moving into to, uh, pool three with Zola and, you know, Moon Girl in pool two. There's so many ways to really capitalize on Devil Dinosaur. And that is why Devil Dinosaur earns spot number five on this list. As we move into the top four, two things occur to me. One, no one's going to agree with anything I've said in this video. And two, that any of these cards I'm talking about could very well be number one. These top four cards are so tight in competitive nature. They are so good. They have so much viable play styles, so many viable decks, that it's almost impossible to rank them properly. But I have. And that's why I'm making the argument for America Chavez to be number four on this list. Because quite frankly, there are so many deck lists I start with by putting Chavez first. How can you not love this card? It in fact was so good that Ben Brode and the team at Second Dinner actually nerfed it. It was a 6-10. Now it's a 6-9. Nice. And then what happened was, is... Everyone started saying, okay, maybe it's not good enough anymore. Maybe it's not good enough. Maybe maybe 6-9 just isn't good enough for a consistent turn six play. Hulk's better. Magneto's better. But are they? But are they? Because when you look at America Chavez, you always draw this card on six and not before. First of all, dodges locations like Mindscape that switch your hands turn six, right? You still get your Chavez. And the other thing is the not before part. You have a 12 card deck. With Chavez, you basically have an 11 card deck. Not only does Chavez make your turn six consistent, it makes your turn one to five more consistent as well. And that is why this card is so beautiful. And that is why it's number four on this list. Now we're in the top three. And you know what? I think you're gonna agree with me on these three because these cards are absolutely ridiculous. How can I not make a video featuring these three cards? In your head, if you think really hard, you know exactly who the next three cards are. Think hard. Because right now you're thinking he's gonna talk about Iron Man. Of course, how could I not talk about Tony Stark? Tony Stark and Iron Man is one of the best cards in Marvel Snap. Iron Man single-handedly ensures that you win a lane provided that they don't counter you ruthlessly and savagely. But let's pretend like the counters don't exist for a second as we put Iron Man on a pedestal and talk about how good this card is because doubling your power at a location is basically a win condition for that location. There are very few players that are willing to try to contest a turn six play with an Iron Man on turn five. 
Unless they have a counter, but let's not talk about that. So basically, someone drops a turn five Iron Man, and someone's like, huh, if they're holding Chavez, if they're holding Hulk or any big play on six, I can't contest an Iron Man lane. I guess I'm going to try and win those other two, right? That is the power of Iron Man. Or they just counter you. But let's not talk about that. Iron Man is one of those cards that really, really solidifies your game plan. When you know you have Iron Man in your hand, you know you can force this position in a lane. You know you can win a location unless they counter you. And maybe that's why he's number three and not number one. All right, now we're in the top two and things are getting really spicy. These cards interchangeably could be one and two. One can make the argument for two and two can make the argument for one. But one thing I will say about two and one is that this card that is actually at number two, if this couldn't be any more confusing than it already is, I'm not re-recording this. Basically, this card is so damn good in pool three, but it is absolutely awful in pool, in pool one and two. How can a card be so good in pool three, but not good in pool two, you're asking? Well, if you like gambling, if you love gambling, then you love Prof X. Professor X is the epitome of gambling in pool one and two, because you basically throw Professor X in prey. You barely win half the time, but it feels so good when you land it. When you land that low percentage trash tier Professor X play that you were just craving because you wanted to, you know, to just throw them out there. When you land that play, you feel like a million dollars. And every time you mess that play up, it just fades into the back of your memory because, you know, you don't want to remember it. Professor X is an amazing card in Pool 3. Why? Because you get extra tools. You get Daredevil. Now you get to see what they're playing in advance of Turn 5 where you play to Professor X. It becomes a much more high percentage play. You get Rescue, someone who I feel is never comboed properly with Professor X. You play Rescue, and then you play Professor X on top, and Rescue runs five additional power with the three that you're getting from Professor X. That's a huge play. That's a massive play. And it doesn't, it doesn't get choreographed the same way a Daredevil play does. People very often don't really recognize a Rescue-Professor X combo. That's why this card's so good. It works amazing with Destroyer decks. It works amazing in other types of decks that really rely on you just owning a location and saying, no, you don't touch this location no more. This is mine. And that's what Professor X does. But, but the thing that held Professor X back and the reason why Professor X is number two is because it doesn't have this universal needs to get nerfed appeal that card number one does. And I hope this video ages poorly because this card gets nerfed next. But if it doesn't, then we're going to talk about the best card in Marvel Snap, possibly of, of all the cards. And it exists in Pool 1. Now, I know I've been playing mind games with you guys. Hovering around this screen. Showing you all these cards. You don't know which one is which. You don't know which card I'm going to pick. But you do know which card I'm going to pick. There's only one card from Pool 1 that really stands out amongst the rest. There's one card in Pool 1 that truly is remarkable. That is a staple in almost every pool one deck, in every pool two deck, and in many pool three decks, despite the number of cards in this game. And that's Angela. Angela has to be nerfed eventually. It, it has to be. But if Angela is not nerfed, Angela will remain one of the absolute best cards in Marvel Snap, regardless of pool. Whether it's pool one, whether it's pool two, whether it's pool three, it does not matter. Angela is going to be near the top. And we recognize why. Yes, you know, Angela is limited because you have to play into the Angela. You have to play three cards into her to get her full value. But if you play Nightcrawler, you can play four. And suddenly you've got a two, nine, which is ridiculous. A two costs nine, really? It happens. It happens. And this makes Angela so remarkably powerful. It is incredible. Yes, there's some macro limitations. You have to play her first in the lane to get the most value. But regardless, she's a truly remarkable card with almost no downside. With almost no downside. When you see an Angela in a lane, you're like, huh, I don't know if I can contest that lane. That's a hard lane to contest now. That's Angela. There's an Angela there. If they play cards there, Angela gets bigger. That's the problem. And that's the beautiful thing about Angela. And that is why Angela secures our spot number one on this Marvel Snap Top 10 Pool 1 cards. Thank you so much for watching. 
We got another list down here, another video I'd love for you to watch, guys. It is so fun making these videos. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch, and we'll see you in that next Marvel Snap video.